for USC's first round match tonight against fellow 11 seed VCU. Head coach Kevin O'Neill has repeatedly said the key word is tempo. USC certainly didn't look like the underdog at the start of the game, going out to an early 17-0 lead. But Notre Dame quickly showed this wouldn't be a runaway victory for the Trojans, coming up with 10 unanswered points of their own to close out the first half. After losing seven of their last nine matches, the Trojans were in desperate need of a win. They got one Sunday against Oregon State, largely thanks to another impressive performance by freshman pitcher Stephen Tarpley. Monday marked the 137th day of the NBA lockout, now one day longer than the NFL's earlier this year. Coming into the game, many thought this would be an easy victory for the Trojans, but USC got a wake-up call early on, with Colorado scoring a touchdown on the opening drive. Many people here at UCLA were not surprised to hear the coach knew Heisel had been fired today, but overall, students had mixed emotions about the decision. More than 80,000 fans packed a sold-out Notre Dame stadium for the first night game there since 1990. You get the sense this was their Super Bowl here. I thought the crowd was awesome tonight. They were electric. But all the noise in the stands failed to rattle the Trojans on the field. I think our, our guys on offense and defense did a great job of just focusing on us. USC had its most impressive rushing performance of the season with 219 yards. Their linebackers weren't as physical as we thought they were going to be, and we ran all over them. Running back Curtis McNeil led the team with 118 yards on the ground. We came out, it was like, we're not going to let them take us down, we're not going to let them defeat us. USC certainly didn't look like the underdog at the start of the game, going out to an early 17-0 lead. But Notre Dame quickly showed this wouldn't be a runaway victory for the Trojans, coming up with 10 unanswered points of their own to close out the first half. Notre Dame's first points came late in the second quarter, when running back George Atkins said the third returned a USC kickoff 96 yards for a touchdown. But the momentum seemed to shift for good with about a minute left in the third quarter, when Notre Dame was on the USC one-yard line. With the Irish on the verge of tying the game, USC safety Jawanza Starling recovered a fumble and ran it back for a touchdown. That gave USC a 24 to 10 lead. I didn't even realize or know if anybody was behind me, but I was like, I gotta run, I can't get caught. USC ended the game on offense, holding the ball for the final six minutes and 43 seconds. Notre Dame opted not to call a single timeout. They just quit, and this, that's what Notre Dame football is about. They're not anything like USC. The Trojans redeemed themselves after last year's loss with a 31-17 win and now hold bragging rights until next season's battle at the Coliseum. From Notre Dame Stadium, Eleni Press, ATVN. I'm here with USC head football coach Lane Kiffin. And coach, your team has lost two straight games by last second field goals. Obviously a little tough to handle. What do your players need to do to move past this and have success the rest of the season? Well, we're focusing on the positive, though, that we are improving in a lot of areas. And now we've got to take the next step, which is finishing one more play at the end of the game, you know, two weeks in a row, and we're 6-0. and The week before, we had the ball down there versus um, Washington and didn't finish him off, kicked a field goal and missed it. And this time, Matt Barkley and the offense finished off, scored a touchdown. And now we got to take the next step is finish him off and then hold him on defense. Your defense has been a big area of focus this year. You have four new starters in the secondary, so obviously you can't change the fact that they're inexperienced, but what can you do to help the defense improve? Well, we've, we've just got to do a better job of tackling, you know, and we've got to get lined up. We're playing a little bit slow right now, and um, we'll have a good week of practice and play better this week. You're playing Cal this Saturday. Obviously, Shane Vereen's a big threat at the running back position. So what can your defense do to try to contain him? Yeah, I was going to have to be very gap sound, you know, because if you give him a crease, this guy's really good. These men and women all dream of baseball glory, but they aren't striving to rack up RBIs or World Series victories. I always wanted to be a major league umpire. Whatever it takes for me to get there, I'll work hard to do it. At a one-week camp in Compton, Current and past major league umpires help aspiring umpires learn the skills they need for success. I see a lot of great umpires umpiring at the amateur level, but they don't have the training. Many at the camp once dreamed of playing in the majors. When that didn't work, they looked for another way to get on the field. I played until high school where I messed up my shoulder and I couldn't do anything after that. I played in high school. But uh, couldn't hit, couldn't run, couldn't throw. So uh, went the umpiring route. And that route paid off. 
Charlie Relaford was a major league umpire for 20 years. He says people don't always realize how great the job is. They all think it's just something we get screamed at and yelled at, but actually uh, once you get started, you either love it or hate it, and I love it. Camp participants start their day by attending two hours of class in Long Beach, where they learn about the rules of the game. After that, it's time to hit the field. We try to show everyone the proper way to umpire and then hopefully spark the interest of some young person that may want to start in the minor leagues and work their way to the major leagues. This camp has now been around for six years. If any participants do very well, they could get recommended for umpire school, which is just the next step in fulfilling their dream. Every major league umpire started at an umpire school. Candidates that we think are promising, we will give them scholarships. There's at least one thing that just about every one of the camps seems to share, a strong love of the game. It's a slower pace, it's more casual. It's, I think uh, for a fan, it's more relational where you can sit there and have conversations. The noise of the crowd, the smell of the grass, everything about the game pretty much. For all those behind the mask, baseball is their passion and they just want to make it an even bigger part of their future. Eleni Press, ATVN. Baseball season is still a few weeks away, but the manager of the Dodgers has already started to break out the L.A. rivalry. Don Mattingly said today that regardless of the high expectations surrounding the Angels, L.A. is still a Dodgers town. To the diamond now where the USC baseball team is playing for the first time since last Wednesday. The Trojans are hoping to get back on track after losing five of their last six games. Now this one just got underway about 20 minutes ago. So far scoreless in the second inning. Freshman Stephen Tarpley is on the mound for the Trojans. Trojans. USC beat Long Beach State 4-2 in the team's last outing earlier this season. Maybe your bracket has been busted or maybe you're not paying much attention to the women's NCAA tournament, but one of the nation's best players is in action tonight and you're definitely going to want to hear her story. Hello and welcome to ATVN Sports Extra, the show that takes you around the world of USC sports. I'm your host, Eleni Press. The Trojans are gearing up for a big game tomorrow against the Huskies at the Coliseum. USC is hoping not to fall to Washington for a third consecutive season. We have a big news story out of the NFL today. Find out what we learned regarding Peyton Manning's future. Barkley had a record-breaking performance last weekend at Colorado. Six touchdown passes. We can't reasonably expect he'll do that again, but what do you think he'll do against Washington? Well, Mark Cuban is making headlines, as he often seems to do. We spoke with ESPN LA's Arash Markazi about how this injury will affect the team. The freshman talked about her stellar performance in recent matches, but she also could not stop praising her teammates. The Trojans' 45-match winning streak ended on Friday after the team was upset by UCLA, but the team remains very confident heading into this weekend's play.